meningitis. Interpreting the CSF is absolutely crucial in determining the treatment. Starting at the top with bacterial meningitis, usually there is a high white cell count, mainly polymorphs. The protein is high and the glucose is low. Viral meningitis is different. Here, the white cell count is mainly lymphocytes with a slight elevation in protein, but not much change in the glucose. TB meningitis. This is associated with a more dramatic picture than the bacterial meningitis. So there'll be lots more polymorphs and even lymphocytes would be seen in the picture. Much higher protein levels than bacterial meningitis and a very low glucose. This is because of the chronic nature of the disease. Fungal meningitis, again, chronic nature of the disease. There'll be high protein, high white cell counts, mainly lymphocytes, and a low glucose. Remembering that a brain abscess is not actually within the CSF, and therefore there might be a slight elevation in white cell count, there might be a slight elevation in protein, but the glucose shouldn't change. Guillain-Barre is after the infection has been. Therefore, lymphocytes may be present, but it's mainly very high protein and a normal glucose. Aspects about lumbar puncture that should be brought into mind. Do you need to do a CT scan before an LP? And I would say usually not, only if there is focal neurology or raised intracranial pressure. And raised into cranial pressure is not to be determined by a CT scan, but by examination of the fundi using an ophthalmoscope. White cell count less than 5 and an RBC less than 5 is normal. Normal CSF glucose is 60% of blood glucose. You should have both samples available. Anything lower than that suggests a meningitis due to bacteria, TB, or cryptococcus, or cancer, subarachnoid hemorrhage, or sarcoidosis. Normal CSF pressure is less than 20 millimeters of mercury. Remember that steroids reduce morbidity and mortality and must be given before or at the same time as the first dose of antibiotics. This is particularly true for pneumococcal meningitis. The difficulty are the exceptions, and there are some. So remember that early viral meningitis can have a predominance of polymorphs. It's not what you would expect. Also, some viral meningitis can have a low CSF glucose. Remember that listeria may have a predominance of mononuclear cells rather than polymorphs, and this may look like a lymphocytic meningitis. And finally, TB can have a predominance of polymorphs rather than the expected lymphocytes. Lymphocytic meningitis. This is particularly important because we're used to seeing polymorphs rather than lymphocytes. Remember that early or partially treated bacterial infections can present with lymphocytosis. Listeria, brucella, leptospirosis, these are all unusual organisms that can present with a lymphocytosis. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, Lyme's disease, which is Borrelia, syphilis, cryptococcus, autoimmune, malignancy, and sarcoidosis can all present with a lymphocytic meningitis. Finally, treatment for meningitis. First line is a cephalosporin. Remember that Amoxicillin or ampicillin should be given in high doses if listeria is suspected. This is because inherently it is resistant to cephalosporins. In addition, patients with confusion or meningoencephalitis should be considered and covered for HSV, which is herpes simplex virus, or VZV, which is varicella zoster virus. This is usually treated with acyclovir, 10 mg per kilograms TDS.